show you weather geeks. Good Thursday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm. Here it is, the most in-depth weather forecast video you're going to find for eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. And on this very wintry day, we looked at the numbers and officially at the airport, two inches is what fell today. Although there was, of course, some variation across our area. We'll show you a few more snow reports in just a moment. But this official number at the airport of two inches today brings us to over a foot for the month. That's 2.7 inches ahead of average for the month. Now, for the season, we're still kind of behind schedule a little bit uh, to the tune of 3.7 inches. But this, of course, is a lot more snow than we've seen through today's date over the last couple of winters. All of last winter, we had about 30 inches of snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport. The winter before that, 22 into 23, we had 22 inches of snow the entire winter season. So we've already eclipsed the number from two winters ago with the healthier amounts of snow that we've seen so far this winter. Although I think we're going to keep running a deficit for a while. You know, the overall idea here, at least in the short term, is that this is a very cold looking pattern, but it's not particularly snowy in our part of the country. That may change as we go into kind of the last week of January. I think there's going to be some, some threats for some winter storms as we emerge out of the deep freeze and head into that last week of January, which won't be as cold, but it may open the door to more winter storm threats. A couple of storm re reports uh, relayed to the National Weather Service offices in Cleveland and Pittsburgh today. A uh, report in Salem, about three inches there. Stoneboro over in eastern Mercer County, about two inches. Two to three inches was pretty common across our area today. Roadways were slick at times, but we saw evidence of the temperature helping us out today. Even though it stayed below freezing, of course, road treatment, whether it be salt or brine or anything else, is more effective when it's 26 degrees instead of 16 degrees. And so while the roads were certainly no fun at all, especially this morning, um, the road treatments became more and more effective as we got into the midday and afternoon and the snow shower activity became more scattered in nature. And I don't think we're going to see many more snowflakes overnight tonight. Some flurries, yes, but the radar is actually quiet here a little after 7 p.m. And while there could be some passing flurries, I think uh, we don't expect uh, too much in the way of impacts from here on out from our snowflakes. The steadiest of the snow now off to our east by a couple of hours, well east of I-79 right now over closer to the Laurel Highlands, um, south and east of Pittsburgh, and heading up towards Dubois and Clearfield along Interstate 80. We're going to squeeze in one decent day coming our way on Friday as a warm front lifts in. And the, the clouds will try to thin as we go into the afternoon. Whether it goes completely mostly sunny or just partly sunny, or even if it just tries to stay mostly cloudy, I think we'll still crack freezing just about everywhere Friday afternoon. Enjoy that day, because while Saturday is not a cold day per se... In fact, it'll be warm enough that some mixed precipitation is pretty likely. I think it's going to be a gloomy, damp day. I think there's going to be a lot of wet snowflakes around starting first thing in the morning. I think the snow gets underway, you know, before daybreak, maybe even similar timing to this morning, 4, 5, 6 a.m. The temperatures are marginal enough, though, that I don't think this is going to lead to much more than a slushy coating, maybe up to an inch, worst-case scenario. Uh, of snow on Saturday. I think there's just going to be a lot of dampness and slush around. I think there's going to be some raindrops that try to mix in at times, especially in our southern viewing area right around mid to late morning. After that, here comes the cold for the second half of the weekend. Now, I think on Sunday, there's going to be some light snow that tries to break out to our south and east. So in Morgantown and maybe even as nearby as Pittsburgh, but especially south and east of Pittsburgh, and over towards Altoona and State College in Pennsylvania. I think there can be some accumulating snow Sunday, especially as we get into the afternoon, but odds favor all that missing us to the south and east. Our weather in northeast Ohio and far western Pennsylvania will be a little more governed, I think, by some lake effect and lake enhanced snow showers that try to get going in the increasingly cold air Sunday afternoon. And once that colder air starts bleeding in, boy, it's here for the long haul, that is for sure for just about all of next week. We'll talk about the temperatures more in just a second, but weekend uh, weather impacts, you know, again, low impact snow on Saturday. Yes, it's going to snow. Visibility might be reduced from time to time, especially in the morning on Saturday, but I'm not expecting more than a, a coating to at most an inch worth of actual accumulation out of this on Saturday. Saturday night looks pretty quiet. Sunday morning looks pretty quiet, but Sunday afternoon and evening, as the colder air starts wrapping in, uh, we start to see an increase in snow showers and flurries. The wind will start to pick up. The wind chills will drop below zero Sunday night. Once the wind chill drops below zero Sunday night, it may not get above zero again until maybe Thursday afternoon, although it may be close to a zero Wednesday afternoon. But yeah, look at these numbers. These are, uh, you know, 
is every place going to see exactly this? No, some places might see a little colder or a little not so cold when it comes to these wind chills. But everyone's going to be below zero in terms of our wind chills from Sunday night through at least Thursday morning. Again, Wednesday afternoon, we might climb close to zero. But at night, you know, we're not going to have any trouble getting down to 15 below, 20 below, 25 degrees below zero even in terms of the wind chill. The actual temperatures might try to get as cold as minus 10, especially Tuesday night. I think Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, really starting to hone in on that period as being probably the coldest in terms of our actual temperature, because that night has the best chance of being clear. And with snow on the ground and a clear sky and this kind of Arctic air mass, and especially if the wind goes light, temperatures can really go low that night. This is the kind of cold that isn't just here for 12 hours or 24 hours. It's going to be a few days. So, uh, you know, concern is there for burst pipes and car batteries, uh, you know, especially if they're not in very good shape, if they're a little older, uh, car batteries uh, having some problems. Um, so make sure that your home and, and your vehicle is prepared for this kind of cold. And, you know, we can trace um, the cold air mass that's coming, the true Arctic air mass that's coming all the way, of course, up through the Arctic Circle. And you could even make a claim that this Arctic air mass or is Siberian in origin, uh, extending from northern Russia across the Arctic Circle and then diving straight through Canada and towards our region as we go into next week. All right. As I mentioned, the last week or so of January, not as cold, but perhaps pretty stormy. At least the threat will be there for some storms. What about February? I speculated on February last evening. I've done so on several videos of late. And today, the Climate Prediction Center did put out their first initial February outlook. And I really like their maps here. I think this makes a lot of sense to me. I think the best chance for a colder than average February will be across the upper Midwest and maybe down towards... Uh, the Western Great Lakes. But the closer you are to the eastern seaboard, I think odds will start favoring more and more uh, of a warm look in February, at least a mild look. For us in eastern Ohio and western PA, I'm not sold that it's going to be really warm or anything like that. It's probably not going to rival some of the really warm Februaries we've had in recent years, like 2017 and 2018. Um, but I could see where it's significantly less cold than uh, January as we flip the calendar into February. Now, I do think that this will be an active pattern, you know, with that kind of a temperature gradient where you have Arctic air still trying to make inroads in through here, but you have a, a Southeast Ridge kind of flexing its muscles. There's gonna be a battle zone and it could be, you know, in our general vicinity. So this may not be all snow, but I think that uh, the, the storm track will be pretty active in, in February. When, when the moisture meets up with enough cold air, it's gonna be snow. It may be a cold rain at times. We might have some mixed precipitation events, but I don't think February will be dry or boring in the precipitation department. So again, I, I like their initial February outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Thanks for watching on this Thursday evening. Make it a great rest of your night, everyone. I'll see you back here on Friday for a weekend forecast update and much, much more.